Yo, it's Smallmouth Crush. Freestyling today. We're just gonna hang out, catch a few smallmouth. I hooked up with the first fish of the day. I don't think he's big by any means, but we're gonna see what we can put together. That big. He's not that big at all. He got me all goobered up. But that hook works. I'll talk about it at some point. That's all coming up. He's big, but I don't think he's that big, buddy. There we go. I decided to move out a little deeper. Uh, I'm at 20 feet, 20, 25 out here. And I was just uh, threw a drop shot on this guy. And he is very large. He's large. He's the right one. Mm. That's a pig, actually. Come on, let me get you. Can I get you, bud? There we go. That's a good one there. That's what I'd like to see. It's a heavy fish. He's probably, yeah, he's maybe five. I'll find out. So this one's actually 5'10". Jason Bait, that one was suspended about five feet down. And he followed my drop shot all the way down. I gotta be ready for these suckers. I know just what to do now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I missed them. I knew it. I knew it too. He'll come back for it. There he is. All right. He, that one ain't big. He fooled me. There was a bigger one there. I promise. I promise. When they're on bait like this, this drop minnow right here, that drop minnow, I got it on eighth ounce. Great Lakes Finesse, Jig Head, or maybe this is 316s. I, I don't know, I'll figure it out. Here he comes. Thank you. 
I, you probably, I didn't save any clips, but I was literally messing with these fish for quite some time. And I was about ready to leave. I'm like, well, you have underwater camera. You might as well check. There's 200 fish around here. I thought they were sheephead or walleye. But they're small. Now so we gotta get creative. Well, my goat, and I don't talk about it often, is that three inch gulp smelt minnow. But they don't want that. So here's what we're doing. I notice that they're up a little bit. They're about five to seven feet up. So I'm going to lengthen my leader from the weight to the hook. And I'm going to go with three pound test line just to see, okay? And maybe a smaller drop shot hook. Let's try that. Okay. <laughs> I got a three pound leader. I got a pretty long lead. I have a size five drop shot hook and a quarter ounce black tungsten weight. I got a drop minnow and I just lathered it up with the Procure Smallmouth Crush Magic Scent. I mean, I don't know what else to do at this point. Got him! That's a fake on three pound test line, guys. Pounder on three pound test leader. Oh, the head shakes are strong. I'm actually going to hit save because this is probably going to be more than a five minute fight. Oh, I can't. I can't hit save. I shortened up the leader slightly. Quarter ounce black tungsten monster bass tungsten. The drop minnow. I got that small drop shot hook on. But that that's a that I'm I'm excited. I thought you was a giant. Oh, oh. It broke me off. Broke me off. Okay, for three pound test. I, I don't know, man. It's the only way I'm getting bites right now. Oh. Okay, so since I'm rigging up here, uh, I use a decoy. Wherever it is. I put it. Try the decoy worm seven light special. Okay, that's what I that's what I was using. Try it. Alright, I'm taking that uh, Procure Smallmouth Crush Magic. You guys can pick this up at Procure.com and I just kinda lather that drop minnow up with it. 
it's got some good stuff in it that's for sure so i guess anything that maybe try to help get a bite here it's frustrating when you can see all these fish and you can't get them to commit A lot of them are a little bit higher up in the water column. So, you know, I don't know if they're chasing bait out here and then they're just chilling and they're not in the mood. I mean, I've fished these fish plenty of times over the years. Like, it's normally not this hard on this school here. Every day, here it is. I'm not saying all these fish all over the lake are like this. I'm saying when you get a particular situation, I've seen this. I've seen this before. All right, guys, so as I was editing this video, I realized. Um, the audio is terrible. I do apologize. That's how it goes when it's windy out there all the time. But you notice I lost that fish. That one fish, when it jumped, it spit the hook. So it just wasn't, it happens. But that, that next fish, I kind of overworked it. So when you're using light line, like, you know, 2.9. And listen, this is uh, Cortland. They make, uh, it's called Ultra Premium Fluorocarbon Tippet. And they make them in a variety of smaller sizes. You want to look at the actual diameter on there. Um, but they have some higher, you know, 10 pound, 8, 9.6, 3.9, which, you know, if I was to experiment, if I were you and you wanted to take a look at a lighter line presentation, um, 3.9, maybe that 5.7, that 2.9 is a little extreme, okay, but you can catch them. So here's a secret. You want to have a medium light rod and you want to have your drag set on the initial hook set. You still want to have the proper drag. Um, you know, with the right rod and the hook set, you should be able to get that fish pinned. And then you want to back your drag off quite a bit. So you're doing that as you're fighting that fish. So the initial, this is just how I, I've been doing it. The initial hook set, your drag's still pretty tight. You reel up the slack. You get you get him tight. He's either going to come right up or he might pull a little bit. But once he starts doing those pulls, you back that drag and just let it go, especially with three-pound test line. But if you allow him to just do his thing and he's hooked good, I don't see a problem. Now, since this video has, has – uh, since I taped this video, I've come across numerous situations out there where there were some finicky schools – it never seems to be individual. It seems to be a big pod. And I don't know if I explained this in the video. I'm just going to I'm gonna take the time to do it right now. I feel like those fish were chasing bait. And they decided, hey, we're full. Everything's cool. I'm not hungry. And they're just out there hanging out. They're suspended just off the bottom. They're not moving much. And they really, they're not aggressive. They don't want to eat. And so that's why I felt like, a smaller profile bait, a lighter line, lighter hook, even maybe a lighter drop shot, a longer lead, a lot of slack in that in that in that you know you don't want to keep a tight line when you're drop shotting with this technique. You want to let that bait just fall. It's going to take a while with the current and everything that's down there. Just let it go down, and gently shake it up. Maybe not even move that weight and then let it fall again and see if you can get those bites. It has helped me. I, I don't know if it's if it's the length of the leader, if it's a smaller hook, if it's really the line. It might be a combination of everything. Now, I still had a hard time. It wasn't like every cast. It was every 15, 20 minutes it would be a good bite. But there were so many fish in there that were in a negative mood that I now know if I run into those situations, which I do quite a bit. Now, I could go 300 yards the other way and find another pot of fish that will instantly bite as soon as I drop a bait on them with my standard techniques. So it's not something you have to always do, but I'm always going to have a rod rigged up now, ready to go for those types of situations. So let's get back to the video. Yeah, 
finally we got one with the three pound test line and the hook the hook did its job I guess that's a good thing Nine. So I have the drag a little tight on the official one, and I make sure to loosen it when I'm using three pound weight. You know? All right, we're gonna wrap this video up. I'm gonna go try to find a few other fish to mess with. Wow, we got a little bit of sun left. Got a few bites today. It'll be an interesting little video. So there's a lot of variables with this setup. Was it the hook? Sometimes a heavier hook will make that bait react differently in the water. The line, was it because they could see the line or now they can't? Or does it make the bait, make the movement of the bait look more natural to them? Who knows? Smaller weight, black weight, I, I don't know. Guys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to leave any likes and comments. Let me know what's the lightest pound test line you've ever caught a bass with. And as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water.